Sean, do you know that colorectal cancer is the most common type of cancer among men, about one in six for male patients? And the second most diagnostic, diagnosed cancer among women after breast cancer, and that's about one in seven. And um, yeah. Yeah, well, I thought that only prostate cancer is the most common cancer among men. Uh, so understand that, you know, Dr. Tan, you are, you are involved in this uh, colorectal cancer. So why are, why are you interested in this research? And why do you go into this field, you know, of all the cancer that is, you know, uh, so-called being uh, research about in, in, in this industry? Why, why this? Yeah. So uh, first of all, the work on human disease is always vitally important. And also uh, everybody will know that constantly there are research going on. I think in the audience, uh, more people can, can relate to it. Uh, people can, uh, uh, they are doing work to help to alleviate their human diseases. And such purposeful work drives us to commit ourselves to be part of the field and being able to contribute uh, by providing materials or even troubleshooting people's difficulties is something that we are driven to do. So uh, we, MP Bio, we actually work with end users to troubleshoot their difficulties and also uh, crop up some ideas that they have in their new research direction. We engage in conversations, we also discuss and see whether how we can help to uh, seek treatments or new treatments for these uh, human diseases, uh, particularly colorectal cancer. So uh, on this topic, we examine a risk factor, which is called the inflammatory bowel disease. So it's known as IBD. And IBD is ranked one of the highest and also most important risk factor uh, related to colon cancer. So uh, needless to say, uh, with being able to prevent such uh, risk will definitely help a lot of people uh, from falling into very severe diseases. Wow, oh, okay. Um, Yong Sing, you were mentioning this, this thing about this uh, inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. So my impression is I thought irritable bowel is just something due to your intolerable to something like lactose intolerant, uh, things like that. I, I, you, you, are you able to talk a bit more about this uh, IBD? Yeah, sure. So uh, taking into account IBD uh, and comparing it to a lactose intolerant situation, uh, is, IBD is definitely a more long-term and a more severe disease uh, over the long run. So you will see symptoms that are more severe uh, compared to a lactose intolerance uh, situation. And the cause of it, uh, I would say that it's still relatively unknown. But what, as far as we know, it is uh, due to a defective immune system. So uh, a proper functioning immune system, it will be able to attack uh, the foreign, foreign organisms such as the viruses or the bacteria that is entering the human body or the host. So in a situation where a person contracts IBD, the immune system is, uh, is so it's a defective uh, situation, and then uh, you will not be able to uh, react accordingly to environmental triggers. So in this case, uh, the person uh, will face a lot of uh, symptoms that will cause pain and also uh, swollen intestines. So what are the common symptoms of you know, IBD? So, uh, some of the common symptoms will be persistent diarrhea, uh, abdominal pain, uh, going more severe, it will be rectal bleeding, and also bloody stools. So over the long run, if you uh, if someone were to contract uh, uh, IBD, uh, this kind of severe symptoms will show up and definitely a uh, person will get concerned. And one of it is also unintended weight loss. So that's uh, something to take note of. And uh, if the situation is not like just a simple abdominal pain for a few days sort of situation. Okay, wow. Um, so Yong Sing, how are you conducting such research on, on IBD actually? Because I, as you explained, I heard that there's a lot of things on Fecal, there's a lot of uh, things on uh, intestine. So I'm looking at you differently right now. <laughs> Do you actually have to take fecal matter from, um, um, I don't know, patients for, for such research? Yes, uh, in the research field, uh, we, uh, people have to take the fecal matter from animals, uh, even from humans, to perform studies, analyze how is the intestinal conditions, because they are related. So an example is that, uh, inducing this disease, IBD, on mice model. So uh, people are able to understand that by inducing the disease, uh, as mentioned, it will cause the intestine to get inflamed. And as you can see on the slides, so there will be loss of surface layer and then uh, the gut uh, microorganisms will actually enter. So this is not a very ideal situation, but for research purpose, we induce this on mice so that the researchers will be able to understand the disease 
and also uh, apply novel treatments and even monitor or even analyze how these treatments can be put over to possibly humans. Uh, so on top of that, uh, we, we will say that IBD is one situation and going further will be colorectal cancer. We also uh, uses a chemical called the azoxymethane, which is uh, which is the dissolved and then uh, uh, given to mice uh, that we can induce a such situation. So uh, you can see on the slide itself, this is how we perform a uh, this is how we perform the protocol that how the mice can actually get induced with IBD. We uh, we put DSS, which is the dextrin sodium sulfate in uh, autoclave water uh, over a period of time to feed the mice and they will actually contract this disease for research purposes. Uh, so uh, with this, we can add on to with the AOM, which is the azoxymethane to induce cancer. So these are the few ways that you can conduct the research and apply treatments or even monitor them uh, in, in using these protocols. So moving a bit further, we also want to understand the gut microbiota which is the, uh, a method, a tool that is also a growing field that people are looking into to analyze the intestinal conditions. Wow. Um, so, Yongxing, your research is actually getting the mice, feeding them with a chemical so that they actually go diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, that's very interesting and very different from the uh, typical um, Kind of research that you see here out there, and you mentioned during your during the you mentioned that uh, you mentioned something called gut something gut microbiota. Uh, mm. Could you tell me more more on this? What what is this about? Yes, uh, so gut microbiota is a collective uh, community of microorganisms that's residing in our gastrointestinal tract. Uh, as you can see on the slides, is actually consists of the bacteria, fungi, and the viruses. So all these are very good information for us to examine the intestinal conditions. So uh, the method to do it is to extract the DNA of a fecal sample and then putting them through gene sequencing. And you can understand what kind of different communities actually reside in a person. And with different profiling, it will reflect different kind of conditions. So uh, in example, a healthy person profile will differ from a diseased person's uh, profile. So uh, in terms of a uh, tool, it will be a much better tool compared to uh, coloscope, colonoscopy, the kind of thing that you have to insert into in people and a much less invasive, uh, although you have to deal with fecal sample, but uh, I think it will yeah. serve as a better choice. Okay. Yeah. Wow, sounds very, um, very cheap uh, to, to, to me, uh, I'm not in this field, but so how, how does that, what you have explained earlier, how does that translate to the treatment of this IBD? For an example, uh, as you can see on the slides, is called the fecal micro, microbiota transplantation. Uh, so this method is a novel method. Uh, okay, so I will describe the method. It's actually transferring of a solution of a donor, uh, their fecal matter, sure. to <laughs> a patient's uh, gut, gut system. So in this situation, although it's not so pleasant, <laughs> but uh, this is a novel treatment. Uh, studies have shown that with the uh, donors micro microorganism being put into the patient's one uh, is able to balance out a bit on the uh, community level and also confer a health benefit. One such study is uh, fighting against infections and a reoccurring infection and uh, the recipient was able to have a um, increase in good bacteria known as the bifidobacterium and in this manner it was associated with a uh, reduction in terms of uh, inflammation. So it's very interesting information for us to know that uh, we are able to monitor the intestinal condition and also at the same time, uh, this typical method actually works in terms of uh, helping ease the condition. And say on top of this, although uh, we are saying that this, this method is good, but uh, more studies will be required, uh, especially on the clinical application on it. Right now, uh, there will be much more study required for this emerging therapy. Uh, we know that even hearing such methods is a bit scary to us. So nonetheless, we need data to back it up that this can be effective, uh, easy to use, or acceptable to patients who are facing uh, these diseases. Well, we have been hearing quite a lot, you know, about IBD research, <laughs> and, and 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 all of these things is about, you know. I don't know if I can say it on, on, on 
on air, you know, <laughs> it's just shit. Okay, so, so, uh, hearing so much. So, what are the future plans? You know, I hear that you know that there needs to be more data. There needs to be more uh, research work to be done. Uh, you know, before it, it really can come. You know, some uh, uh, of a method to you know treat colorectal cancer. So, what are the future plans? Along that line, we will of course pursue uh, more work in this field, and we hope that uh, more methods can be validated. Uh, as much as for us, we actually work with end users. So we hope that we can help them in their projects, uh, troubleshoot what difficulties they face using the materials or what kind of protocols can be designed so as to understand the disease better, provide even more novel treatments. And in, in this situation, uh, this is uh, one of the things that we do. Secondly, we also will do our own R&D so, uh, as our part to innovate, to come up with new material, more innovative material to crop out new directions, pursue uh, even that creativity flow for uh, in terms of treating diseases and uh, even better, even uh, more effective for for human uh, who are facing uh, diseases. Okay. Wow. Uh, I I think throughout the whole the whole whole presentation, I think it's very informative, very um, picky at the same time with all the fecal uh, uh, mention of fecal and all these. So um. Uh, before we end, let's. Uh, we have. I have some games and questions right now. Hi everyone, a uh, pleasure to be here. My name is Yong Sing. I'm a research scientist in, in MP Biomedicals. We are headquartered in the US, California, Irving. We provide a large range of uh, products. Uh, in the life sciences field and also the diagnostic field. Uh, in the life sciences field, we have uh, cellular biology, biology and molecular biology, and also industrial chemicals, biochemicals. For diagnostic, we cover infectious disease and endocrinology. Uh, myself, I'm based in Singapore, which is our Asia Pacific headquarters. Uh, thank you.